A couple of months back, I made a video here on Shark Bites all about hybrid sharks. And in that video, I told you about this strange mystery here. This is an infographic from a genetics lineage study looking at white sharks across the world. And from it, we can see that they're broadly separated into three distinct lineages. You've got your Atlantic slash Mediterranean white sharks in red, your North Pacific white sharks in blue, and then your Indo-Pacific white sharks in black. But I'm guessing that most of you have probably spotted the section of that infographic that sticks out like a sore thumb. And that is this individual here. This particular white shark is genetically derived from the Indo-Pacific white sharks, black, and then the North Pacific white sharks, blue. So what on earth is it doing here, mixed in with all the red Atlantic slash Mediterranean white sharks, coincidentally also in the Bermuda Triangle? Now, if you were trying to find the answer to this question here on YouTube, you'd be met with these existing videos posted around about the time the research paper came out last year. Of course, looking at the thumbnails, they're all about 30 minutes of absolute nonsense from apparent science fact channels that have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subscribers. But if you were after the real answer, the scientific answer that is, then you've come to the right place. So stick around as I talk you through this awesome research paper on white shark genetics. And a bit later on, we'll hear firsthand from one of the lead authors of that study as to exactly how and why this particular hybrid white shark ended up on the wrong side of the map. Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. Now, really quickly before we start here, I'm gonna hold my hands up and tell you that genetics is not my speciality. Anyone who knows me closely will tell you that genetics was never really my strong point, both at school and at university. I just found it really hard. I don't know why, I just couldn't quite wrap my head around it. I guess we've all got our strengths and weaknesses, me included. So because of that, when it comes to genetics research papers, I have to work twice as hard here on Shark Bites to disseminate that scientific information to myself and then relay that back to you guys in normal speak. Basically, if you're following along just fine, please do hit that like button because that means that I'm doing my job properly. <laughs> now, even though it's a tricky genetics paper, it's still an awesome one. And the research itself has pushed on white shark genetics quite a way. It was written by a team of shark scientists and geneticists towards the end of last year. And although it's still relatively hypothetical, it did confirm a few existing suspicions we had about white sharks. And that is that these fierce predatory fish are divided into three distinct genetic lineages that very rarely mix when it comes to producing offspring. You've got your North Pacific white sharks that hang around Hawaii, the west coast of North America, China, and Japan. Then there's the Indo-Pacific white sharks that are found around South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. And then there's the Atlantic slash Mediterranean white sharks that are kicking around the east coast of North America and the Mediterranean Basin. Three genetically distinct lineages. I think it's important to point out here though that these are genetically distinct lineages as opposed to genetically distinct populations. This basically means that each geographic group of these organisms descended from its own individual common ancestor. As in the Atlantic slash Mediterranean ones descended from one common ancestor, the North Pacific ones descended from another, and then the Indo-Pacific ones descended from another. It doesn't mean that they're genetically distinct populations that classify as as different species or even different subspecies for that matter. They're all still the same species, Carcharid and Carcarius, because they haven't genetically diverged enough from one another yet. The three white shark lineages though did diverge from each other somewhere around 100,000 to 200,000 years ago. Now, I imagine at this point in the video, there's gonna be a few of you out there that remember a previous Shark Bites episode where I said that Mediterranean white sharks are actually closely related to the Pacific white sharks. I know, I know, it's confusing. What we're seeing here in real time though is the science moving forward. Forwards. It's true there are some white sharks in the Mediterranean that have Indo-Pacific DNA, but we now know there's also white sharks in the Mediterranean that have Atlantic DNA as well, which is the slightly more obvious connection considering there's no major geographical barrier separating the Atlantic white sharks and the Mediterranean ones. And there's also plenty of first-hand evidence of the Mediterranean white sharks popping out of the Straits of Gibraltar and visiting places like the northwest of Spain and the Bay of Biscay. For that Indo-Pacific connection though, all it needed was one individual to make that journey from the Indo-Pacific to the Mediterranean, and bang, you've got traces of DNA there from the other side of the world. That paper where it mentions the connection between those two ocean basins, though, was actually written by the same scientist who wrote the one that we're talking about today, Professor Leslie Noble. And he's the one we'll hear from a little bit later on about that Bermuda hybrid. So around 100,000 to 200,000 years ago, the white shark lineages separated from each other. But what caused that? Well, the scientists in question believe it to have been as a result of the penultimate glacial period, or ice age, which lasted about 60,000 
thousand years. During this period, sea levels were much lower because most of it was ice and then ocean temperatures and currents were vastly different as well. So right there, you've got physical barriers in those lower sea levels and you've got temperature barriers as well. And those barriers were essentially blocking the white sharks from moving around the oceans, effectively trapping the three populations where they were. And because they were trapped, they couldn't breed with each other and mix their DNA, so they became isolated lineages. And when the Earth started coming out of that penultimate ice age and sea levels began to rise again, the populations remained isolated by the currents. And that's how they've remained up until present day. Three relatively isolated populations that basically never mixed with each other again. But as we know here on Shark Bites, sharks always seem to have a little trick up their sleeves that make us scientists scratch our heads and go, huh. How did that happen? None more so than this hybrid individual found in the Bermuda Triangle. Now the Bermuda Triangle bit is a classic attention grabber that makes people go, ooh, it's a strange unexplained mystery. Whereas in reality, this particular shark was caught off the coast of Florida about here, which technically, if you did look at a drawing of the Bermuda Triangle, it is within that triangle, yes, but the shark itself wasn't just somewhere random. It was likely caught up in that winter migration where the white sharks migrate down the east coast of America, just off the coast of Florida, and then into the Gulf, trying to find waters that were within its temperature a tolerable range. So nothing strange there. The thing that was strange about this particular individual though was that it was potentially a first generation hybrid between the Indo-Pacific lineage and the North Pacific lineage. Now that F1 bit, the first generation thing, means that this hybrid may have been produced relatively recently. As in that individual could have recently been the direct offspring from an adult female from the North Pacific and an adult male from the Indo-Pacific or vice versa. The rarity of that though is just extraordinary. Throughout their study and analysis of thousands of pieces of genetic material from white sharks all around the world, they didn't find any other examples of interbreeding apart from this one. It's just an exceedingly rare and really odd finding. But the weirdest part about it wasn't that it was a super rare hybrid, it was where they found it. That individual has no logical reason to be found there, but there it was. Now I wanted to make sure that I was giving you guys the real scientific truth in this video about this odd hybrid. And I could have speculated on lots of different reasons for it, but I thought it would be best to go straight to the source. So I emailed one of the lead authors from the study, Professor Leslie Noble, to get his take on it. So you guys knew that the information was coming from a real genetics specialist. And you can see Les's reply here. It's about as genetics jargon heavy as I'd expect from a geneticist, but if you wanted to read it in its entirety, you can just give it a pause. For those of you out there that just wanted the shark bites breakdown, here's how it goes. Migratory species that make long distance trips all around the world are thought to have some kind of spatial map in their brains that gives them a sense of their position on Earth. And it's thought that these spatial maps can have a genetic component to them. For example, if you're an Atlantic white shark that migrates from the east coast of America down to Florida and into the Gulf each year, then that migratory route and inbuilt spatial map might actually be passed down from parent to offspring. So that when those little Atlantic white sharks start to get older, they have an innate knowledge that they've got to move from here to here and back again. It's in their genes. But if this genetic component that relates to their inbuilt spatial map gets disrupted, then they can end up getting lost. And something that might disrupt genetic components is the interbreeding between two separate separate lineages, a North Pacific white shark and an Indo-Pacific white shark. Somewhere in that genetic material, the offspring white shark's wires have just got a bit crossed and it's ended up getting very, very lost. In his email, Les describes it as a case of cognitive dissonance where the hybrid shark has experienced internal behavioral conflict and has just gone completely awry. Now as to the exact process as to how it's got there, to explain that, we've got to have a look at some ocean currents. Stay with me here, guys. So the presumed route here for the hybrid is almost undoubtedly around the Cape of Good Hope here in South Africa. Now, there's an ocean current barrier. Remember we were speaking about those barriers earlier that sits right about here called the Benguela Current. This particular current is a really cold water current that runs up the western coast of Africa. It's so cold that white sharks can't tolerate it. We know this because there's been lots of satellite tracked examples of white sharks who have ventured from the Indian Ocean towards the Benguela Current and ended up turning around and heading back east because it's just too cold. Although there's another current that runs down the east coast of Africa which is called the Agulas Current. This warmer current of water which is well within the temperature tolerable range of white sharks curves around South Africa and out into the Southern Ocean before turning back on itself towards the Indian Ocean. But because of the angle of that turn, every now and again, the Agulas current will do something unusual. Occasionally, it will spin off massive circular currents of water called eddies that are made up of warm Indian Ocean water into that cold Southern Atlantic. Can you see where I'm going with this? Those warm eddies, which can sometimes be hundreds of miles across and can stretch thousands of meters down into the water column, are flung into the Atlantic Ocean, but remain warm. And if you just so happen to be a white shark that's perhaps a little bit 
confused about where you are in the world, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that you might end up being caught in one of these Agula eddies, which would allow that shark to pass through the cold Benguela barrier and into the Atlantic Ocean, where it might just happen to get transported up towards the northwestern Atlantic by Florida and the Bermuda Triangle. Now, even though this odd little white shark hybrid was discovered, getting lost and having a spatial map that's broken isn't a particularly advantageous trait to have. And so it's unlikely to be selected for when it comes down to natural selection, because you don't want all your offspring to just swim off to random places all around the world where they might struggle to breed or find food. It's not a beneficial trait to have. But as we start moving into a significantly warmer future, the breakdown of some of these oceanic currents has been predicted by lots of oceanographic models. And if those currents and therefore barriers begin to decay, there won't be much stopping those white sharks moving between the different ocean areas. So the chances of getting more lineage hybrid white sharks is undoubtedly going to go up. Maybe in 50 to 100 years time, we might end up having a lineage white shark map that looks like this, maybe. Some of the journeys that these white sharks can do are just astonishing. And it's crazy to think as well that they can be pushed even further with those ocean currents. I reckon the Agulas current is what Nicole the white shark used when she made that monstrous migration from South Africa to Australia. If you haven't heard about that, it's literally mind blowing. And I tell you all about it in this video here. She was the first documented white shark to make a journey this long and she did it in record time. If you wanna know exactly how quickly she did it, give this video a click.